when performing the orthopedic exam, there are several things that you can do to make the process more successful and to improve your results. Number one is to have your owner present if possible. That allows the dog to be more comfortable. It allows the owner to, to participate into a limited degree and will often ensure that you're able to get through the process with less patient distress. Number two, it's important to have a technician present who is comfortable, well-trained, and able to restrain the patient so that the patient is safe, the owner is safe, and the veterinary team is safe. Number three, use a surface that's comfortable to work on, that allows the staff to work closely to the patient, and the patient is comfortable standing on. A good rubber mat is essential to this process. When starting the exam, it's important to say hello to the patient and reassure them that everything is going to be okay. The next step is to move forward and start to place your hands on the patient. The technician will support and restrain and the owner stands in front to reassure. I start by placing my hands and just feeling the patient, getting them used to where I'm at and where my hands will go. I'll balance out the patient position and start with placing my body up against the patient so they know where I'm at. I always commence my orthopedic examination by gentle but thorough palpation of the spine. I feel for thoracic or lumbar pain or spasm by palpating the paraspinous muscles. Localizing the pelvis, feeling the lumbosacral junction, performing a tail jack if necessary, and it all allows the patient to feel for you before you palpate the limbs. In the pelvic limbs, I commence with good support and the first thing I will do is check the patient for proprioception. In this patient, proprioception is present and is normal. I tend to commence my pelvic limb exam by mobilizing the pelvic limb. Start to move the hip, start to move the knee, start to move the hock to get the patient used to the process. I tend to commence from the hip by flexing of the hip, extending the hip, and looking for signs of pain or loss of range of motion. When moving down more distally, it's good to support the limb, keep the body against yours, and when examining the foot, run the digits through a sequential check for range of motion, pain, and resistance. Palpating the phalangeal joints, the metatarsophalangeal joints for thickening, fibrosis, or abnormality is advisable. When moving down to the hock, it's a good idea to extend, flex, palpate for stability, in both an extended and a flex position. Placing the foot back to the ground is helpful to feel the Achilles mechanism and make sure there's no thickening or change. Palpating the long bones of the metatarsus, the distal tibia, and the femur is helpful to determine the presence of bone pain. The stifle is best examined by checking its range of motion, full flexion, full extension, the presence of an increased internal rotation, the presence of patellar instability or effusion in the joint. These all should be determined. Stability should be checked by both thrust test and by cranial drawer. Both these exams can be done with the patient standing or in some cases it's wise to put the patient into recumbency 
to allow you to palpate those areas with a more relaxed patient. When moving forward on the patient, I will straddle most patients so that they can feel where my legs are, they feel where my body is, and I'm able to control their body position, particularly their desire to sit. When moving cranially, we will examine the cervical spine, its range of motion, in all four directions, passing it back to my technician so that we can then palpate the cervical spine in terms of the vertebra, possible pain sources or pain locations. Palpation of the thoracic limb starts with extension of the shoulder, flexion of the shoulder, flexion and extension of the elbow, before I move distally to look at the foot. Palpation of the foot should include, as in the hind limb, all the digits so that the manus is thoroughly palpated for joint pain, joint abnormality, or long bone issue. The carpus should be flexed and extended, the elbow flexed in a neutral position, extended, and in particular, pronated flexion should be performed to stress the medial aspect of the shoulder. A thorough orthopedic examination is invaluable in determining where the focus of pain may be in a patient and allowing you to proceed forward into diagnostic imaging.